Ba 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 Okay. That's all the energy I have. That's all the energy I have for today. Kieran is going to be grumpy. And he did just have to kill Irsa, so he's probably just going to be... Yes, I can hear others. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. Lip reading this entire time. Yeah. Can you hear me now? Okay, good. Can you hear me now? Good, 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 good. Let me see. Oh gosh, now you guys are muted. What did I do? <laughs> All right, hang on. We will fix this. Ah, I was working a second ago. All right, someone say something. Hello. Hello. Hello, hello. And here for beginning of the slashing and the stabbing and the smacking. And the tossing okay, of... Okay, good. Now I got it. Okay. I just mixed up what the audio inputs and outputs and stuff were, so... Crossed all the correct wires again. Chat, please let us know if all goes to pot again, because that would suck royally. Thank you. Thank you, Born Stellar. Alright. Hello, I am Mr. Markham. Uh, starting a little bit late tonight, we had some chaos. One of the players had to run to the ER. Um, everything's okay. Um, it's just, it, it was the best possible scenario. So that's that was good to hear. Um, they won't be joining us tonight, though, unfortunately. Uh, so let's do Kieran. Would you like to introduce yourself for the night? Hi, I'm Cole Wolfron. I play Kieran. He is a cranky barbarian. Uh... Yeah, and he likes to throw people. This is true. Uh, how about Abigail for Naz? I'm Naz. I play Abigail. Never gets old. <laughs> right? Uh, and then lastly, our little gnomey boy. Is hello, hello. Hello. It's, um, it's, it, it's, it's Sir Wellington. I I I I'm the I'm I'm the I'm the I'm the gnome child. Uh, I like cookies. Um, and 
and uh, I like I, I like pulling pranks on people, but they don't always like that. So hi. And I throw him. He's the one I throw. <laughs> oh, also I have a bear. You do. You do. And a horse. I have two animals. They are technically mutated and demon-like, but they are they are a bear and a horse. <laughs> I have Courtesy a bird. Everything. So last week, quick recap. We continued from the week before, where uh, essentially what happened was the party had been spending the last few months um, kind of holding up to, to reset um, in this uh, little, uh, in this village. And, excuse me, uh, and it turned out this was a village of were-devils um, who had specifically designed the town in a kind of a spiral shape with the guest houses at the center so that the guests could not escape. Last week, uh, they ran into uh, one of the townsfolk who had disappeared earlier that day with uh, one of the PCs, uh, Callie. And uh, they found Sigurd in this cave. Um, wow, I'm telling the story really out of order. All right, let's start from the beginning. Um, on the night of the Blood Moon, the entire city turned into were-devils and proceeded to tear apart the ship of survivors. <coughs> A handful of them did make it out simply by dumb luck, as one of the were-devils happened to be standing over one of Sir Wellington's tunnels. The thinner ground caused a cave-in into a cavern below, which the party was able to escape down through. Um, Kieran had to kill his, uh, girlfriend the last three months, unfortunately, and a few other casualties occurred. Um, Sir Wellington was left behind with his two friends as they were hidden in a tunnel. Um, and the party, through, in escaping through the cavern, uh, encountered Sigurd, who was one of the townsfolk that disappeared, as I said earlier, with Callie earlier that day. It was revealed, however, that he had taken Callie, tied her to his horse, and sent her to Sanctuary to ensure her survival of the slaughter that was coming. And then, as he did every blood moon, locked himself down in this cavern with a goat so that he would not have to partake in the bloodbath above. Um, he explained the nature of their curse, how when the arc de arc devil first took over these lands thousands of years ago, he transformed them, and anyone not in the one uncorrupted part of the continent, now called Sanctuary, was transformed as well. For this village, they were cursed with, essentially, lycanthropy, but demon version. Um, each new offspring, upon reaching a certain age, undergoes this transformation, and if they do not kill... On their first night, um, if they don't kill someone on their, fir on their first night of transformation, come sunrise the next morning, they die and their soul is sacrificed to the Archdevil Hadion, who ro rules this continent. So the townsfolk constructed this, this spiral design. They would lure in guests with food and a great time, put them in the center so that they couldn't escape, and then whichever family had a youth that was about to undergo their first uh, were-devil transformation would get the houses closest in the spiral set up to the individuals, which is why these houses were so simplistic in their possessions, is because they would rotate out where people lived. Um, Sigurd offered to take the part, uh, lead the party to Sanctuary, as he now has four months before he will have to undergo another transformation and can get them there and then get away before he loses his mind for a night again. Um, Abigail uh, was sent on a mission to replace a couple of uh, test subjects that she may or may not have accidentally killed via bleeding dry. Um, and she said they needed to be isolated and not with their, her main party. So they chose a random scavenger they found out in the middle of the wastes and Callie, who was out by herself. So we left off with that. And let's pick up with uh, Kieran. Kieran, so you 
pursued the party down uh, the tunnel. You caught up in time to hear Sigurd's story about the true nature of their curse and um, how the village worked and stuff like that. Um, and that Callie is safe and away. Can you give me a perception check? Uh, that's an 11. <laughs> okay. Everything's hunky-dory. You guys make your way Yay. out of the tunnel and into the bright morning sunlight. Um... <clears throat> Oh, anyway, I guess uh, Sir Wellington. Mm -hmm. <laughs> You're not with the party. Um, Kieran did nope. not notice in the bloodbath shock of the moment. Um, I'm just going to say Marcus didn't either. You guys... Actually, I don't remember. Marcus was just massive. The what? If, unless you forgot, I had enlarged Marcus... Oh, yeah, he was. That's right. That's right. That is true. That was like the last thing I did before I dragged my little friends into the hidey hole and yep. That's uh, true. create. That's cast. true. So, so, yeah, he's he's a giant right now, essentially. So, Kieran, you catch up to the party to find a giant Marcus, which is probably why you were a bit distracted um, and didn't notice immediately that Sir Wellington is not present. Um, Sir Wellington. Your little hut has come to an end as you hear screams have died down. There's some moaning coming up top. For the most part, it, it sounds like it's it's kind of ended, though. Um, make a survival check. Wait. Second. We return to my dish. What's that love thing? Love thing. Survival, survival, or is it? Oh, there it is. Uh, twenty one. It's Venti Van. Yeah. Okay. Um, you have been able to deduce that it is probably morning now. What do you mean by that? You were able to kind of track the passage of time. How long okay, that time sort of that? morning. Yeah. Okay. Sorry, that when you said that, I heard screaming and all that first, so I wasn't sure if I was now here. Now it was like morning. You're just uh, hearing people mourn. <laughs> their loved nope, ones. all good. <laughs> yeah, no, like it was kind of like, oh, maybe morning. No, <laughs> I, don't, I don't know. I don't know what Abigail's pulling up there, so you never know. It might be morning. <laughs> You never know. I do nothing. Uh-huh. Okay. Um, so, how long has it been since we've heard, like, screeches or screams or things like that? The what? How long has it been since we've heard, like, screeches oh. and screams and such? A couple hours. Okay. Um, I have... Uh, I'm blanking on the boy's name. Was it Devin? No, it was not Devin. Harrison? It was Harrison. Harrison, Harrison that's it. Harrison and Kaylee. Yeah. Uh, yeah. God. So I have I, ha I have that <laughs> generic enough name. Um, 
Yeah, so I have them kind of like hide behind me as we like sneak forward. And I'm going to like keep my eyes open on like just keeping an eye out trying. Actually, no. Sorry. We would have ended up taking essentially a long rest in that place. Um, I'm going to go ahead and use like to just I'm going to be like, all right, guys, we're going to just chill for a second and let me check to make sure everything's good. I'm going to cast Arcane Eye from oh, where okay. we were. And I'm just going to like have it travel through, check and see uh, how things are looking and all that. Okay. Um, so our it last it lasts for an hour, and you can just and I, and I like... can just and I can just keep moving it. So basically, um, I anytime I I can take an action, I can move it up to thirty feet. Oh, nice! So I can just keep like, and I can see through it, and so. Oh, you can! Ow! And it's invisible too, which is nice. Yeah, yeah, you can do that. Okay. I'm just gonna take some time scouting around, essentially. And okay. Um, check out and know if like anything's up or if like we're safe or what. So, essentially. The were devils are all gone. Mm hmm. There are a bunch of pretty nearly naked villagers kind of shambling around. They don't look so great. Um. As, as I see this, I lean over to Harrison. I'm like, we weren't part of a nudist colony, right? I, I don't think so. A lot of people are out there naked. Maybe we, the howling Ew. we heard was other stuff. What? What? I don't understand. I don't know. I've just heard a lot of howling from Kieran um, <laughs> at times. So I just, I don't know if like this was the same sort of howling. It sounds yucky regardless. Yeah. Um... They are very much covered in blood. Uh, at least one or two are still actively eating the um, corpses they are bent over. Almost a zombie-like intensity about them. Do I recognize the corpses? Oh yeah, these are all people from the guest house district. Other former survivors and stuff like that. Do I recognize any of them as, like, Kaylee or Harrison's, like, parentals? No, they're orphans. You know what I mean. As in the people in charge? Yeah, the people that have been taking care of them. Oh, they died in the shipwreck. Who have Kaylee and Harrison been staying with this entire time? Just, they've just kind of been there. Like, the orphans as a cluster were just kind of, they followed the oldest orphan until the oldest orphan went missing in that blood shade attack situation. So you're saying that I am their leader now? Technically you have been, yes. That's why they've been following you around. The ranking leadership in the orphanage has been decimated. <laughs> They are gone and have been for a while. They're either in, you know, in Abigail's cages or very much deceased or sleeping. Don't need patients. Wellington having more power. <laughs> so yeah, no, that's why they've been clinging to keep. Wellington. Is this is the most they've seen? The other adults just kind of keep forgetting they're there because these are like adventurers and stuff who aren't used to cue, babies. Cue my anime intro music. The new anime <laughs> series, Ranking of Orphans. <laughs> <laughs> for some reason, it's the. And for some reason, it's the 90s Berserk opening theme music. Some... Tell me why, tell me why. Just as 
Wellington is just chilling with his orphans. Yes. I had a student come up to me yesterday and go and and just be like, "Mister, I've got a, I've got a dark joke for you." I'm like, "Okay." And, and she went, "I gave an orphan a phone, but he couldn't find the home button." I'm like, "It's a dark joke." <laughs> it's, yeah. Okay. Sir Wellington well, has good. those vibes. <laughs> Good to know that uh, my my people are like that. Like they're not. Yes, they've lost, but they they're they're not losing anyone right now. Technically speaking, so okay. Yeah, they're not hmm. losing anyone okay. else because there's no one else to lose. <laughs> that moment Jeez. in your traumatic backstory where you're good to go because the world can't take any more shit from you. <laughs> yeah. Real, like I think this is like the time where, like, seeing these people and realizing it doesn't matter to any of them. Like, it sinks in for Sir Wellington. He's like, I need to protect them. Aww. Aww. All right. Uh, we're gonna move through like the hidey holes towards like the exit of this area because. We have hidey holes that are clo- I mean, that I know are closer to like the exit of the town. So, uh, Roll if we get to any areas a that are D twenty, if you okay, get to any if, areas that are what? If we get to any areas that we're kind of like caved in, we'll go like around them. Oh, okay. Straight D twenty. Uh, that's a nine. Hmm. Yeah, you run into quite a few of these caved in areas. Takes longer than expected, but we do it. Right. Make a perception check as you go through one of these. Active perception, or does this be passive perception? Passive. Well, here's the thing. Would Sir Wellington look down into the caverns below? I mean, when they're... Yeah, he would, maybe like the first one he would have peeked down, but like not something where he's like actively looking for anything though. Oh, okay. What's his passive then? Sixteen. Oh six oh, okay. Well with the sixteen he would pick it up. Um you only need a fifteen. So I'm not curious what I would have rolled. Quite a ways. Oh below. wow. I actually would have rolled nicely that time. Oh really? Yeah, it would have been it would have been a twenty. Natural or dirty? Dirty. Ah, uh-huh. still nice. I have I I see I see the thing is I just have a plus one to my perception, so I would I have to roll a fifteen to get my passive. So uh... I would say seventy percent of the time my passive is going to be better than my roll. Makes sense. All right. Um... <laughs> One of these, one of these where it like caves in, you're able to kind of like skirt around uh, mm-hmm. on kind of like this little ledge underneath where they can't see you from above. <laughs> but, as, and, but to get to the other side of the um, tunnel that's, you know, hole again and then climb back up into that. And one of these times as you're doing that, you look down. So when you look down and kind of checked out the first time, you notice there were like, there were three still wear still actively wear devils down there kind of like moving around um cool yeah yay <laughs> and they were kind of like wading through a, a kind of like a, a little small a stream that was flowing through there um as yeah. you got farther each time it got it was like it was going downhill so it would get further and further away um, this time as you look down, it's, it's quite a drop at this point, but you look down and you, it you, catches your eye. Something is in the water. You see tentacles. Tentacles? What do you mean? I see, I, I see tentacles. How bottles. large are they? Are they like, or is it just like occasional ten, little tentacles or like what? These are... Well, you can make a perception. Because the last check, time so. I saw tentacles, our boat was being destroyed. I mean, it's not that large. 
Yeah. But they are kind of like connected to stuff. Um, tell you what. Um, make a perception check for me. Well, I rolled a 15, so it's going to be 16 again, so... Okay. Well, actually, no, we can use the 20 you rolled. We can use the 20. Um, cause I, I mean, like, if this was like a nature check, then it would be like a... Tw this would be a dirty 20 anyways, so any... I mean... It's... This is a perception, because you're trying to... Why is it... Guess... I, I, how Out of curiosity, why would it be perception? Like, I've seen it, mm -hmm. so if I'm trying to determine what it is, why would it well, be perception Well, you're trying to determine again? the length of it. Oh. You say you're trying to guess how long the tentacles were? No, I was just saying, are they, like, are are they large or what? Oh, oh, okay. Um, that I could tell you. Uh, it's... I'm not trying to guesstimate how big like the creature is. probably, like, six feet or so long. Okay, they're... Yeah, they're big. They're they're large. They're not destroying shit. They're they're large. yeah. They're not croctopus large, but no. yeah. Um, <laughs> croctopus. <laughs> Actually, can you make a history check for me? Do you want me to re-roll or just use a roll I just use? You can just use the roll you use and add the the okay. history modifier. Oh, dirty twenty. Oh, sweet. You recall, sir, not sir, <laughs> he's just Marcus. Um, you recall Marcus talking about... <laughs> he hasn't been knighted yet. Right. You remember Marcus talking about... Oh, gosh, I was knighted I was, by the Burger King. I wish King. he was here for this one. Um, he's going to have to watch the VOD. You remember Marcus talking about tentacles wrapping around him? Hmm. When he was sinking under the weight of his heavy armor. Um, and mm. he wasn't the only one. Uh, he started exchanging stories with the other paladins and yeah. other heavily armored survivors. And they yeah. all had the same story. Some, some tentacles just kind of wrapped around them and kind of pulled pulled them upwards towards the surface again. And then they, they would black out and didn't remember uh, anything else. These are about long enough for that. Oh, uh, so you had demons that were like, we need these things later on, and we're just pulling survivors because they don't want them actually dead. They need them for later stuff. Gotcha. Well, this is floating limp in the water. It's surrounded by a pool of blood. The body is face up. The top half... Oh, so these aren't writhing tentacles. These no. are just dead tentacles. Yes. The tentacles... Oh, I thought these were right. Sorry, I thought no, no, these no, no, were no. active. Okay. No, no, I said floating limply in the water. Sorry, I misheard. All good. No, they are, these are, they're covered in large gash marks. There's a pretty good guess that the were devils you saw earlier killed this thing. Um, and it takes a moment for your eyes to kind of adjust to the dark. Um... But you then realize that the, the tentacles are like a lower half, like a centaur-style lower half of the body. Um, the upper half, the, the lower half is like almost like an octopus. Lower abdomen and just like a mess of long tentacles there. The upper half appears to be that of a sea elf. Gotcha. These are just like the creature that Brandon created. Oh really? He had, he had done like uh, like kind of like mermaids, but like the lower half was uh, octopus what instead you call of it? fish. Not octopus, uh, squid. Squid. Ah. Yeah, I guess kind of similar to that. Then yes, yes. Um, okay. Now I need that sweet sweet perception check. All right, let's reroll. I will allow investigation as an alternative if it's better. Well, investigation is always going to be better for me personally. So, uh, oh, oh, that would, either way, pretty good. 17 plus 8, so 25. 25? Yeah. You recognize the, <clears throat> the sea elf upper torso of this deceased. 
octopus merfolk as Hyla. Okay. That mean that name personally means nothing to me, but you weren't here for that session, so. were you? Darn it! The t- it was yeah, Abigail. It was it was it was Abigail, and it was what was Marcus? No, it wasn't even Marcus. Well, if if I if I was if I was in the diggy oh. hole anyways, I wouldn't have met Hyla. He is a no man. He's digging. Okay, a hole. so yeah. diggy diggy hole. <laughs> Never mind you. Oh no no no! Technically, you would have. Mm, no, you I mean, have. if they were amongst the survivors, yeah, I might have seen. Sure. Like I might have seen them, but it's not no. something where I would have been like have, actively you would not involved. Have met her. Never mind. You don't recognize her. You don't recognize her. Just just a yeah. pretty sea sea elf with a, a mer octopus lower abdomen. Um, never mind. Never mind. I forgot that was not you were not there. That night. I'm going to Ooh. like I'm going to have them move back a little bit. Um, yeah, that was Kieran be- and Abigail that night. So because <laughs> I got drunk so, so so they are <laughs> yes you did. Uh, there there's wear demons down there still. There are three of them. Yes. Um, well, they're not down there. This is way down the line. You're you're probably nearing the. Uh, what? So there aren't any weird demons next to the like octopus, like mermaid person. No, no. Never mind then. You keep going. Okay, I'm curious. What was your plan? To prank the weird demons. <laughs> okay. <laughs> no, she's. Just... I was. I was. I was gonna cast major image and have the like thing start. Like slowly fusing back together and all that. Oh my and, gosh! Yeah. And like starting to stand up and what have you. But yeah, no, there weren't any things there. So I was gonna be like, "Hey guys, move back. Watch this." Yeah, no. That's pretty funny. Nope, nope. Yep, nope. They are they are farther upstream. They are hunting. They appear to be sniffing. Like they are following a scent, actually. Following a path that a uh, certain Azamar and his bear had recently traversed. Uh, <laughs> that guy down there? Wait, what? I'm confused. They were following Kieran's scent. I didn't know Kieran was Azamar. E. Huh? It says right by his name. <laughs> oh, that's true. It does. <laughs> I, 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 I never paid attention to that guy. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Dude, I'm bisexual. Why would I not be playing an ASMR? <laughs> or a tiefling. Those are the only two options. Um, anyways. Yeah. Yes, anyways. Uh, I, I don't know that they're following him, so fair it enough. Matter. Fair enough. All right. Yeah, I guess it's not relevant. I just, I just, I just, we just keep moving towards the you, exit. You do make it there <laughs> without event. Um, what is your plan cool. now that you're at the end of your line? I'm um, still behind the walls. Yeah, we're trying to get out. I'm. I mean, I know I'm good on food for the three of us. So, I'm running. I'm running low on cookies at this point, but I still got a lot of beef jerky, a lot, because I have we. That's, that's not been one of those things that I've been actively eating. I'm gonna really like. I'm. I'm like at the point where I'm not like. I will say, Sir Wellington is like, not actively just like sharing cookies as easily as he used to because he knows he's running low but I had three months I had a three month supply of cookies in my bag of holding it's been three months huh yeah Yeah. so like you're so around I, like the last couple days worth of food or cookies. Well, I well yeah, cookie wise, I had three months worth of saltine crackers and beef jerky as well. So, 
that stuff I haven't really touched because it wasn't cookies. Right. <clears throat> All right. Make a self check for me. Okay. Healthy little Wellington. <laughs> Ow, that was nice. Uh, 17 again, nice. Oh, um, so 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 19. They're making another one of those. Yeah, they are. 19. All right, you stealthily out. Um, are Harrison and... Uh, Sir Wellington, do, do we follow? Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. We, gotta, we, gotta get, we gotta get it out of here. There, I don't. We Wally, there, there, there's Wally, stuff I'm going scared. on. Yeah, with the, okay, there, 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 get, there, like, there, grab tugs there's out stuff of. going on. They here. They're, they're just not good, and we probably don't want to stick around. Gosh, he's a hyper intelligent five year old. <laughs> huh? He's such a hyper intelligent five year old. I mean, he has a twenty intelligence, so yes. <laughs> right. Right. He, he's smarter he, than he's, he's smarter he, than he's, his dad. He's smart. He just he doesn't have like the highest wisdom right now. So it's like one of those things where like he knows like this is going on. So like in the present he's like this, but down the road he might go well, like Wellington is uh, twice as smart as his dad, but not as wise. <laughs> yeah, my wisdom is a thirteen. Kieran is lightly wiser because Kieran has wisdom of fourteen. <laughs> But his intelligence is 10, so Wellington is twice as smart as his dad. I guarantee you're twice as strong as I am. My strength is a 9. Mine's a 25 because of an item. <laughs> yeah, see, there you go. I, I yeet. You, you're almost three times as strong as I am, but then again, you're you're three, you're three over three times as tall as I, I am. I was about to say, so Wellington's sense. like, what, two foot tall? If that. Yes. What do you mean? If that he is, he is two foot three inches, almost. Because I'm because Kieran is six five. He's one inch away from being three times Wellington's height. <laughs> if he was six six. He would be three times Wellington's height. I actually saw a family at, at the store today. The mom must have been like seven foot something, and she had a couple of boys that looked like they were between eight and ten, and they came up to her knees. It was, they, they, she was literally three times her kid's height. I was like... Do, and she do was the in, giant woman song from it. Right? Oh, she she was in flats, too. She was in, like, woman. She's in like flat sandals, and she was seven mm. foot something. I'm like... She's... Uh, I'm guessing she was... Was she blonde? Redhead. Okay, I was gonna say like that's that's some like Nordic jeans right there. And she wore like green, so she had the like auburn hair with like a green dress. I'm like, could not look much more. Well, not Nordic. I don't know. I guess it's Irish, but Irish aren't known for being tall like that. It's Scottish. Mm, and Scots aren't known for being tall like that either, though. But definitely something Nordic, probably. Probably. Time traveling Viking, I'll bet. Your time traveling Viking should actually be really short. Uh, Vikings were considered way taller than everyone else in the world, but they were like at most like five ten. Right. It's just that the English were the average height they was like five tiny. three. <laughs> the average height for an English man was like five four. We are yeah, technically five, giants these days. Yeah, if I went back to Viking times I would be a giant and they'd be like are you a Jotnar? Yes. <laughs> they would they would they would rally the forces against you in a heartbeat. Or they would just feed me. And they'd be like, ah oh, yes, good food. <laughs> <laughs> you could just try and persuade them that you're Loki. Hopefully you roll really well in deception. I don't want to be Loki when I can be Thor. And okay, they'd escape. Fair <laughs> I don't know, I could see yeah, Thor would yeah. You'd need to grow out a beard for that. I, can, I mean, I can. This is not shaving just today. You've seen me with a beard before. <laughs> That's true. That's true. That's true. That's fair. All right. So, Sir Wellington, I must now roll for your little friends. Are you doing really anything to boost well. their sneakiness? Um, 
Am I doing anything to boost their sneakiness? Let's see. For your sake, I hope so. Um. Shin, shin, shin. <laughs> um. Is this concentration? It is not. All right, we're just going to go ahead and, because we're trying to get further away. Um, uh, I don't fully know. So, enhance ability. I want to cast enhance ability on both of them. Um, there's, uh, let me look this up. And, and, okay. Chun, chun, chun. Dun, 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 dun. Oh, um, so we're going to give them the cat's grace. Which is they they get advantage on ah. um, all dexterity checks, um, and they also will not take falling damage from twenty feet or less as long as they're not incapacitated. Well, unfortunately, the second rolls were a five and a four. Yay! So they're they're with advantage. Their their rolls stay steady. At what I rolled, and uh, well, this they have this for the next hour now. That's good. Um, they believe they are stealthy. Sir Wellington can tell they are not. But they're not. One is kind of quiet. Um, K Kylie is actually surprisingly good at being very quiet. Um, Harrison. Uh -huh. Not so much. That that boy rolled a uh, eleven minus three, so that's an eight. On hit, yeah, they have a minus three to their their dexterity. Um, they're they're Yay. small kids. They're not. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. I'm gonna. I, I, devil's advocate. Small kids can be some of the quietest, sneakiest little motherfuckers. <laughs> Yo, I, and when I was in Thailand, I had this, l this little side story. Quick, I was I walked from the night market to my Airbnb. And it's like a thirty minute walk. I'm walking up, and all of a sudden, out of nowhere, this little kid pops out and just jump scares me. Oh my gosh! But he had, but I couldn't help but like laugh afterwards because he like he had like this massive shit eating grin on his face. And he was just smiling afterwards, and I was just oh, like... Oh, Sir Wellington. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, In pretty much. <laughs> um, yeah, but yeah, and then also knowing how I was as a child as well, like, at times, like, the amount of times, like, scared my mom, like, unintentionally because of how quiet I had been. So I'm just saying, saying because they have a negative three because they're children, I don't think is, like, really accurate, But Fair I, I, I'm saying I, I will. I understand they have a negative three. I'm saying <laughs> I don't think it should be because they're children. All right, all right. Um, we'll say it's because they don't they just, have the knowledge of when they need to be utterly quiet and what utterly quiet is. Yeah, that's fair. Like Harrison is still whispering and stuff. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Are we being you sure quiet? kids do that. Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. You tell you tell the class Are to be we silent, there yet? and then they just start whispering, and it's like, or or yeah. they or they start like drumming, and it's like okay, drumming and whispering is still making noise. That is not being quiet. <laughs> like I am being quiet. Mm, I beg to differ. Yeah. Okay. So we'll say it's that he's 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 actively talking. <laughs> Yeah. Kylie has done a pretty good job. Um, she'll like whimper every now and then because that's another thing kids do when they're scared. Even if they need to be quiet, they start crying. Yeah. But she's managing to like muffle it with her hands at least. Um, every few feet, 
Harrison just says something else. <laughs> uh, you do, however, make it. You can see... How close to the exit would this last tunnel be? Um, I mean, where was... Where is Marcus in that when we showed, like, how far from the exit was Marcus when we showed him the hidey hole? Because it would have been about 10 feet away from him. 10, 15 feet. Oh, you're maybe just, like, 90 feet away from the entrance then. You're really close. Yeah, okay. Because that's, that's, that's where it would have been. Yeah, you're right there then. Sweet. Um, you pop out and you make it part of the way to the exit but then um one of the now the guards luckily are trying to put their armor back on so they're like they like look over and they see you three and one was like oi we got witnesses and I okay. was like just let him go they're just kids and like um, one is like is trying it, to is, hop it, in it, your is it, direction. It, it just is just the two of them. No, there's like ten guards. Are they are total. they clustered together? No. <laughs> Damn it! You could. There's maybe like a group of four somewhere. Okay, who ha who's seen us? Uh, well, after the first guard, you know, sounds the alarm. All ten. And, and like so, the ent like we're heading towards the entrance. What? How? Like how? Like I'm trying to get a visual of like what this looks like, so I can okay, tell you. Okay, so what you I'm have the do. entrance dead ahead of you, maybe thirty yards yes. away. Yeah. In front of you, there's like one or two guards. To the yeah. right, uh, those are the ones. Uh, to the right are the two that saw you, and kind of sound one of them raised the arm. The other was like, Shh, just let them go. Um, and then to the left of you, there's like four guards in a cluster trying to, to get dressed. Um, just kind of like talking and then kind of to the right and a little bit over, uh, are just a couple more kind of scattered about individually. So essentially you have four to the right, four to the left, two in front ish. Mm -hmm. Only one is actually directly in the path of the exit. <laughs> okay, so let me check one thing real quick. We're level seven, correct? Indeed, you are. Okay. I know what I'm going to do. Right. I'm going to cast sleep. It has a ah. range of 90 feet. I'm casting at 4th level. Alright. How many can you target with this? Uh, I have to roll for HP. So it says... Uh, the spell sends creatures into magical slumber. Roll 5d8. The total is how many hit points of creatures a spell can affect. Um, 
Oh, so it's like every creature that it, if if it like. So like you get a hit point total, and then the closest ones to me are affected first, and then as it goes as out it further, out until it like can't you you, it anymore. and then you reduce how much HP worth until uh, okay, it's like that makes sense until they're they're still up. Yeah. All right, roll away. So. I need, one, so I need to grab my phone. Today's session brought to you by Mead. <clears throat> right? <clears throat> while he's while he's rolling, um, Kieran, give me another perception check. Eight. <laughs> mm-hmm. It's not Kieran's day. You are in shock. In the middle of a very romantic evening, your girlfriend turned into a monster that tried to eat you. Mm. And now apparently Marcus is a giant. Uh, Of course he is. Wait, would Marcus have reverted when... Okay, actually, that makes it even more impressive. So, Marcus was knocked unconscious by one of the were-devils, and they proceeded to start eating him. His girlfriend healed him up and then carried him to safety. That just makes her even more of a badass if she carried a giant Marcus. A giant Marcus, a giant Marcus. All I want to be is a Kieran that gets to see a giant Marcus. Roll to not fall in love with Marcus. No kidding. <laughs> oh man, now I roll at twenty. <laughs> <laughs> you are in love with him. Let's go. Hey, what's 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 Abigail doing? <laughs> uh, 60, 63 she's, HP total. She's scrying on her si- he- secret love, her dearest Ma- Kieran. <laughs> <laughs> Don't make that face, Naz. <laughs> Uh, it would have been 63 total HP, so I don't know what uh, they are, how many... Abigail doesn't like. strike me as the type who's into buff barbarian men. <laughs> <laughs> I like how Nass had to think about it. She's like... <laughs> she's like, I don't know. <laughs> she just went... Is she? Nah. So what was that total, Sir Wellington? 63 HP total. So... Contrary to their almost 200 hit point were-devil state, uh, their human forms, or humanoid forms, <laughs> have a lot less. Um, you knock out six of the ten guards just instantly. Unarmored, and yeah, they're just base HP the- of 12. Are the other four aware that then that this has happened to the other six? Well, yeah, they just saw them just like... Okay. Great. Well, are those other four the ones that were clustered? Let me roll for that. And by (laughs) clustered, I mean like within like, I think, 20 feet of each other. Uh, 3R1 is not. I Imagine 10v1ing a five-year-old and losing. Just so. <laughs> <laughs> Just <safe>. Right? <laughs> well, I try and make my, uh... So, so three of them are I within 20... I could have given them 20... like 30 hit points apiece, but I was like... These are unarmored humans, essentially. So, so, tw- so three of them are within twenty feet yes. of each other. Is there a central point that if I hit, there's a, that would encircle all four within a twenty foot radius? No, the fourth is on the right side of you. Oh, uh, okay. Um. Actually, I should roll to see if any of these guys even care. <laughs> With a nat one, the guard on the right just kind of like looks, sees everyone collapse and starts snoring, and then just goes back to getting dressed. 
So not. So the other. We're going to try to. We're going to try to move forward and see if any of them are going to try to stop us. One of the three on the left is like, hey. Uh, Well, when he says that, I'm going to drop a moat and cast fireball. (laughs) The other two are just like, forget it, man. We don't. Yeah. Um, All right. (laughs) Dexterity saving goes for them. Yeah. What's the DC I have to pass? Um. Holy cow. <laughs> That's ironic. Um, well, it's, let's see, it's plus, plus three, yeah, it's plus three. Uh, 16. Okay, I passed it with two 17s, and then a four. The irony is the one that rolled a four was the one that was like, hey, you, stop! (laughs) It's like the other two were just like, stepping back. (laughs) That's on him, not on us. Um... And last roll, let's see. <laughs> Those last rolls were great. Uh, the total for uh, damage for fireball is 31. So at half, it's going to be six, like 15 or 16, whatever you want to say. But either way, at half, it's higher than 12. Yeah, it is. Um, the other two jump back are hit by kind of the, uh, the, the, the one tries to go forward, the other two are like, just, just leave them be, and they see him like, flick, and they kind of jump. They're still caught in the, the brink of it, but brunt of it, and seem to have dropped unconscious. Um, the, very badly burnt as well. Um, but the one that was like, you stop, just like is instantly incinerated and just kind of like a charred husk of a kind of skeleton I'm, I'm at just, point. Just I'm just like to, 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 to Harrison and uh, Kayla, I'm just like, keep moving, keep moving, keep moving. <laughs> gotta get out of um, here, gotta get out of here. With the nat one, the guard on the right doesn't even look up. He's like, I don't give a fuck. Last night was rough. They can just get the heck out of here for all I care. He hears the explosion. He just, like, starts tying a bootstrap. He's like, (laughs) None of my business. (laughs) No. (laughs) I don't give a friggin' fuck. (laughs) He very much is going... I wash my hands clean of this. Yeah. I have nothing to do with this. They are three children. If they would have posed a problem, let the demons in the wastes handle it. I don't want to deal with that. I didn't want to kill anyone last night, but I don't remember <laughs> what happened. <laughs> Hi. Yeah, he just very much. I don't care. <laughs> cool. Well, they. Yeah, you can have a pancake. Yes, you can have a pancake. Sorry to interrupt. Um, Kieran, can you give me one more perception check? Eleven. Okay, what's your passive? Uh, my my passive. It's 12. Okay, that'll work. Um, Kieran, you hear a distant explosion. Explosion? Mm-hmm. Hmm. I'm going to start moving towards the way of the explosion, I guess. Um, in that moment, you kind of scan the crowd and realize Sir Wellington is not with the company. You hearing the explosion with your passive was enough to lower the DC to 10. 
to yeah. notice that he was missing. <sighs> hey, what's <that> shite? <laughs> Starts looking for him. You are at this point further downhill by a long shot. Sir Wellington, can mm. you give me a perception check as you guys sprint out of the uh, castle? Not castle. Uh, the, the the fortifications. Yeah. Thank you. Mm. Oh, nice. Uh, Nineteen. Stalking towards the Wellington. <laughs> Nineteen. Not bad. Not bad. Not bad. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> You see in the distance a unusually large Marcus, along with. Uh, <laughs> oh, I'm well aware of why. Wait, no, he wouldn't be this large still. Oh, you're right. It's dropped down. Never mind. Uh, you, you, you spot. It's been it, like that. That was like a enlarged reduce. Yeah. What? How long is it? It's not it's, long. It's just an hour or two. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it. No, enlarge reduce uh, lasts for a minute. Oh, oh, okay. Yeah, it was long enough for him to rush in, maybe do like a little bit of stuff, and then. Yeah, unfortunately, he was unconscious from the moment he was hit from behind. <laughs> <laughs> well, the, in his mind, it made it more right. impressive. So, in his mind, the fact that he was dragged away by the girlfriend was more impressive, but he had shrunk down by that point. Technically, actually, for the first, like, 30 seconds of her carrying him, he still would have been large. Yeah, but still, in his mind, it probably was like, he doesn't know how long that spell lasts. That's He's true, like, yeah. that's really impressive. <laughs> that's true. <laughs> <laughs> so, in reality, she only had to, like, lift him, and, like, for 30 seconds, she was like, okay, let's go. And then, <laughs> back to small again. She's like, okay, it's better. <laughs> yeah. All I want to do is see him turn into a giant cleric. So, a giant cleric. <laughs> so, Kieran. I can make see, it happen. Right? You see Sir Wellington, like, cresting the ridge. Like, Gandalf coming over the hill. And then on his right and on his left, his two wingmen. AMR and... No, wait. Actually, this is just... You just, you just see it. You just see his booking it like... Yeah. Ah! <laughs> Slow motion, Harrison, <sighs> like, trips, and is like, no, and just, like, starts tumbling down the hill. <laughs> Wellington does? No. Well, uh, Harrison. <laughs> I just you see, you just see guy, Wellington just... looking over, like, <laughs> eyes wide, but, like, getting this massive smile on his face, <laughs> like he's gonna start laughing. I'm just picturing this in uh, slow motion. So I, have, can I have... try to grab said <laughs> child and stop him from falling to tumbling more? Well, I mean... You're like 200 yards away, but yes, you can run and stop him from continuing. You, well, maybe you're only like 100 yards away. We'll see. That's 100. Um, uh, we'll see how fast they can but, sprint a football field. Right, basically. Um, so basically, well that's, well, that's a 26 on my athletics check. Perfect. For that, so. Yes, you can. You can run over and catch him before he face plants into the rocks. Because up there, it's kind of like a sandy hill. But where you guys are are rocks. It's very rocky. On I'm, this I'm gonna tell Wellington's tier. trying to be stealthy, and I'm just gonna look at Wellington and just give him a look. Oh, like, he's not trying to be stealthy at this point. No. I'm just gonna they're, be like they're, they're Wellington, out, they're, they're <sighs> out of the clearing, and he's just like booking, like ah. You, Why are you running? Oh. <laughs> you, so, as, as you see, here's a beautiful picture. In slow motion, they crest the hill, they're sprinting. You have, um, Kaylee is just also like sleep, sobbing sleep, as she's running. The sleep spell only lasts a minute as well, by Oof, the way. Yeah, get away as fast as you can. Yeah, well, Kay that's why he's like running. Right. Book Kay it. Kaylee is just sobbing as she's running to his right. You have Harrison grinning gleefully until he trips and then he looks terrified as he starts tumbling and you have in the middle Sir Wellington grinning at Harrison's misfortune as <laughs> as seeing her friend fall and presuming he was shot Kaylee's sobbing turns to like scream crying as she continues running as well <laughs> just for the most comedic trio coming down that hill possible I'm just like why are there children running? <laughs> I just realized you now you now on your hand have Harry, Hermione, and Ron. Essentially. 
Yes. Don't oh make me gosh. Hagrid. Yep, you're Don't Hagrid. Me Hagrid. Yep. Oh. You're Hagrid. Much more competent, oh. more competent Hagrid. <laughs> Essentially. Or, well, or, Hagrid's not or, incompetent, but or or if you or if your dad does that make you serious? Ooh, I prefer question. that, but. <laughs> Serious buff. <laughs> <laughs> you must lift. You must lift with me, Wellington. <laughs> Wellington just gets these tiniest little gains, and he's just this buff little five-year-old gnome. <laughs> he casts minor illusion. He is not actually lifting, but he casts minor illusion to make it look like he's lifting. It, <laughs> it, it's it, it's it, it's very much that sequence from SpongeBob where he's like. Testing minor illusion. Yeah. So anyway, just makes, like, it, well, makes it look like he's really I just large. Look at Wellington, I'm like, I'm holding Harrison. <laughs> Wellington, why are what are we running from? There were guards up there. They, 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 they were they were they were like obviously there's something wrong with the people in there and uh I I, I put some to sleep and I torched the other ones. And right. we're trying and to get he's away. Going to walking speed, walk faster than Wellington runs, and just pick Wellington up and put him on his shoulder and grab the other kid. Uh, <laughs> still holding. Harrison. Kaylee is still sobbing, by the way. <laughs> just holding Harrison because he's probably also like ten. Like seeing as dashing for me yeah. gets me fifty feet in one turn, and you dashing three, for you, 40. you have three five-year-olds <laughs> on your hands. They're very lightweight. It shouldn't yeah. hinder my movement speed. <laughs> Let's see. What, 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 what is my weight? My weight is eight, like 17.2 pounds. That's how much I weigh. Considering my strength is 25, I don't think it's a problem. <laughs> no, I think so I just, I, I just I am the walk. weight of a grocery bag. I just kind of lightly <laughs> jog from my 40 movement speed away. All right, let's find somewhere to recoup. Uh, Sigurd will kind of like wave to you guys, like, you guys need to get away from there. I, I get really wide eyed. I'm like, <laughs> what the fuck is he doing here? Last I heard about you, you were with Kali. Where's Kali? Kali is safe. I, I sent her on ahead. Insight check. You may insight. I would also do that because from what the dogs told me... 19, but Wellington's is probably better than mine. <laughs> uh, I don't know. My insight is plus Oh, actually, four, maybe so. not. My wisdom's better. Oh, actually, yeah, 21, so... Oh, wow. I have, I, I have a plus four, too. I have a plus two. My wisdom's better than yours, but my insight is not. You probably have... I have additional... proficiency. Yeah, I was about to say. I have proficiency in athletics, and that makes it plus 15. <laughs> My proficiencies are deception, insight, investigation, and survival. He absolutely appears to be telling the truth. I'm like, I'm just at this point, I'm just like, okay. <laughs> You're like, uh, right? I, I, I'm just, I'm just like, at this point, I've had enough of the town behind me. I'm just like, I went out, I'm done, let's book it. Oh, you missed last week when, when Marcus offered to behead him so he would be free of his curse. <laughs> I was like, I was not expecting this behavior from Marcus. <laughs> so you don't well, like being cursed does, to it does, I could behead it does you. Li it does line up for Marcus to say that. It's Fine. It makes, very perf it makes a lot of sense, the fact that Marcus is that strongly opposed to the demonic and he is a demon. So he's like, if you actually are good and you're not wanting to be part of this curse. Like, I am going to look at Wellington and go and just kind of whisper to him, keep an eye on him. Yeah, and, yeah I have from the start. <laughs> oh, right. I should have believed you. Pats him on the head and just keeps walking. And he looks and goes, wait, where's Snickers? Did we lose Snickers? You just see Snickers pop out from under his shirt. You see Snickers like also running over the hill. <laughs> Actually, no. I would. I, I wouldn't put. I wouldn't put. put As he's riddled with arrows. I, no, I'm kidding. Actually, I will say only Wellington is on my shoulder. Uh, the other two are on Rioff, my bear, my polar bear. I'm like, oh, by the way, Wellington, this is Rioff. He's your. He's your new brother. He's a bear. 
He's also my child. I, I, but but I'm not related to bears. But you're related to me, and he's my child. I just, I just, he's your, I he's just, your step. He's your adopted brother. He's adopted. It's fine. I look down and I, I go. I whispered. Hey, Harrison, what's your real name? The bear just. Rios. He can talk. talk. <laughs> I can talk to him. So he just told me what his name was. <laughs> I speak with animals. <laughs> I'm like, well, that's that's a new one. <laughs> Okay, yeah, I, I'm, I'm not. I'm not used to other people being able to talk to animals as well. Cool. Also, hello, Snickers. It's good to see you again. I'm just like chirps a little bit and then. Oh no, I have in. to. Um, crunk was, uh, squeak, squeak, uh, squeak, uh, squeak, and squeak, squeaker. <laughs> Snickers oh. just looks. looks I just realized like, I'm kind of playing Scottish crunk. It's like, yeah, that, that, yeah, that's pretty uncanny that he's doing that. Um, I'm not, I don't know how I feel about that one. This is weird that he can talk to me as well now. <laughs> uh, right. I mean, squeak, squeak, uh, squeak, or squeak, or squeak. <laughs> I'm kidding. But he's just like, uh huh. He's like, he's like, all right. Well, okay, I'm going to go back to to hiding under Wellington's uh, tunic because there's been a lot going on right now. Um, yeah, so... that's, that's, that's fair, Wellington. Or that's fair, Snickers. Uh, also, yeah. you, you hide. And then, uh, Rayoff, this is Snickers. If you see him running around, protect him. Bye, Hi, Rayoff. Hey, Snickers. Is that your real name? It's, yeah, it's what I go by. Cool. It's my I'm username real. on Twitch. I'm a bear. <laughs> He's like, right, is your friend also make you do really dangerous shit all the time? Nah, really. He feeds me a lot of cookies. Why don't I eat fucking cookies? <laughs> because uh, you haven't met Wellington yet. Wellington will be the one who gives you the damn cookies. Uh, probably not. He's running a little low on them. <laughs> It's, at this point, Karen just looks a little thing. Well, I think my bear and your uh, your and Snickers are talking. They're chatting now. Yeah, I mean, I mean, it looks that way. This is a little weird. I'm not gonna lie. I was talking. I mean, talking to the dogs was one thing, and the cats was one thing. I will say, your your the real there is a lot more uh, uh well behaved than than the than the than the. Demon bitch that is boy, as Abigail called him, but that wasn't his real name, and she didn't want to hear. It. And then he, met, I misheard him, and he got mad at me. And all right, is is that the damn cat that I saw walking around when you and Abigail were yelling at each other? Uh, maybe not that one, unless it was in the one in her arms that I was chucking uh, Eldritch Blasts at. Right, that was the one. That's what I saw. Yeah, yeah, it's a little bitch. Could sir, could sir, Rio, could Rio, sir, Wellington, if Wellington tells you to eat that cat, ask me first. <laughs> Do not. He's like dope. I like how we all have animals, and it just slightly escalates. Right. Wellington's got a squirrel. Abigail's got a cat. Kieran's got a bear. How is this like to- turning into Pokemon? I had a choice between having a dire wolf or a polar bear. I and mean, I, I caught bear. myself a squirrel and two children. <laughs> oh, yeah? I have a lot more children. <laughs> well, be fair, well I've mine are more like I've Pokemon. I've got be- and Callie in mine, so my children are stronger than Abigail's, just saying. Actually. Abigail didn't get hers willingly. <laughs> Actually. So, so she is a Pokemon <laughs> trainer. She caught them against their will. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, but she doesn't have the badges to train them. <laughs> oh, God. I'm Ash, I'm Ash Ketchum. I just find them and go, do you want to join me, friend? Uh-huh. Okay. <laughs> That's literally what happened with Wellington. It's like, yeah. do you have a dad? No. Do you want one? Sure. All right. <laughs> yeah, basically. Yeah. And Callie, too. She's like, I need a dad. Fine. <laughs> Here in is everyone's dad. And people who watch the stream call him daddy. 
I've gotten some followers from the stream who are like, Daddy, and I'm like, is this Kieran? And I'm like, no, this is a different barbarian. When Kieran comes, I'm like, listen, I've done two of them, but I need better sounds. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that's gonna I need be fun. to do. I need to do an animation of, uh, of the sound. My one of my favorite all time sounds, especially because now I the fact that Wellington has that little dagger, like the magical one of what do you have? A knife? No. And then I just need to get uh, Nicole to do an audio, like an extra bit of audio that goes, "That's my boy." <laughs> that's my, that's so so that we so we so we have Wellington running with the knife. Marcus going. What do you have? A knife? No! And then Kieran goes, yeah. That's my life. <laughs> no, let them keep the knife. It's Abigail being like, no! And then it's like, no, no, let, oh, no, it's Marcus. No! And it's like, no, no, let them keep it. Let them keep it. I gave it to him. It will absolutely be Marcus <laughs> no. that says no. Marcus is always saying no to Sir Wellington. And then the it's like, uh, it is true. He always says no. He's raining on my parade. And then it's like, no, Wellington, when you hit things with your knife, remember to hit them right here in this artery right on the, the neck. <laughs> Kieran's just teaching Wellington where all of the vital points are with this knife. Yeah. And so, it's like, well, you don't, but, you, but you, don't, you, you don't use those. I'm like, right, because when your sword's this big, you're going to hit at least two of them every time you hit someone. <laughs> so you guys are finally reunited and safe. And the last survivors of the survivors. <laughs> that went well. Um, let's pan over and see what Abigail's up to. Speaking of the devil. I mean... <laughs> Abigail. Yes. Speak of the devil, literally. I've just captured another child. Yes. Speaking of the damn pirate. You, you, we left off... With Why? Appearing... How many children is Abigail going to so, abduct? I guess... I don't know if you heard, but this is Callie. I have yeah. Callie. <laughs> it was an accident. <laughs> she just passed to no. be sent after Do you not remember the conversation Kieran had with Abigail last time? <laughs> don't, don't touch my kids, basically. And I mean, what does Abigail do? Technically, I she's kind of... I assume you meant Sir Wellington. Also, she, I'm she, not she, took, she took one of the children. She didn't touch them. Not yet. As long as Callie is okay, Kieran will not try to murderify anybody. Technically, Callie is currently Sigurd's kid. She swapped dads. <laughs> and then he tried to kill her. So No, actually, he, he did it. I know, I know. <laughs> but from Kieran's perspective... That's true. Listen, everyone has two dads, except Abigail. She has no dads. I have a dad. You He's have a real fine. dad, actually. Meanwhile, yeah. Kieran's like, I have Wellington, I have Callie, and then I have my... I think Abigail's the only one who's on good terms with her parents. Hey, my <laughs> biological... Kieran's, Kieran's oh, biological <laughs> children are on great terms with him. They're just with his dad. Like, Kieran's on great terms with his father. His father loves him. <laughs> he's, wa he's watching his actual children right now. <laughs> fair enough, fair enough. Okay, yeah, that's a good point. So Listen, Kieran and Abigail died. are the only two that have good relations with their parents. I my wife her. died, and I went to go, well, by good relationships, it's kind of like if you've seen Vikings. I'm kind of Bjorn Ironside, and my dad's kind of Ragnar Lothbrok. It's one oh, of those okay. kind of father-son relationships. That's like, fine. <laughs> it's, like, it's like, if you fuck up, I kill you. I figured that. Vikings are awesome. Meanwhile, he's just collecting children just in case. <laughs> <laughs> So we old. see where he gets it from. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Listen. Kieran's got like seven siblings. Now the fact that they are all dead doesn't speak too well. But yeah. As far as he knows, they're all dead. <laughs> yeah, there's that too. Abigail's siblings are all alive and well now, courtesy of Abigail's dark magic. <laughs> well, they weren't. Yeah, sure. <laughs> she was dead, but sure. Technically, she wasn't dead before then. I don't know if she would have been well, but she wasn't dead. But anyways. Or was she? Mm. She was wasn't. Mm. What happened after... Oh, wait a minute. That incursion happened in the future. No, it didn't. No, yes. Yeah, it did. Never mind. It did. <laughs> yep. Never mind. Okay, fine. Fair enough. Yeah, nice try tricky and all that 
Um, yeah. <clears throat> so, Abigail, we left off with you appearing in the cage with Callie, and you going, "Oh my gosh, we're in a cage!" Oh, I didn't. I wouldn't have actually said that. <laughs> oh, I was just she joking. Didn't. Oh, okay. no, I no. <laughs> she was she was pulling the damsel in distress card. I thought. <laughs> no, 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 no. She wouldn't have actually said that because yeah. everyone else in the cage knows that she put them there, so there's no use. I mean, actually, the uh, were devil girl is the only other one in this cage besides the corpse of the one that she killed. Um, yeah, but there's she, witnesses. She doesn't remember. There's definitely witnesses. Well, yeah, in this room. yeah, it's farther, you know, down the hall and all that. Exactly. Yeah, like, there's no point in faking at this point. It's like I'm just gonna misty step out of the cage Oof. again. I imagine Callie has some choice words for Abigail. Um, Callie can... Callie <laughs> can... can sit there and pout. <laughs> Callie can choice words the wall. I'm not listening. Mm. I'm trying to find something to do for Callie, because I... Brutal. Or can we just... I don't know what to do in this scenario, because I don't want to, like... Should you just stay in the cage? We can do a flash forward to okay. after you have your interaction with her, and we can do a flashback next week that, that she's here so that you can actually have that interaction. Where would you go okay. after having your interaction with Kelly? Might depend, but for now, let's say... Uh, no, I, I don't think she'll say anything insane. Yeah. <laughs> she'll go... Oh... These are for Coraline. Why are they in Houston's speech? Because that's oh, the teleportation yeah, location. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> no, I know. Okay, can I cast old person on Kelly? She's not sure. here. I feel bad I can, trying to do this thing. I, no, she she gave me permission to do whatever we wanted with her, except kill her. Okay. In the words of... Excuse me. In the words of Silky... Take this child and turn. Uh, take this innocent child and turn her into a hardened adventurer. Or actually, I'll, I'll hey. cast it on both Callie and the new whoever just came in. All right, so I'll roll for both. Yeah. That's a big fail. I don't think a nine passes does it, or the uh, adventurer. Wait, the, I um, the the scavenger. I just want to see which slot I need to use it at. The two. What am I saving? What is it? A wisdom saving throw. I don't even know yet. <laughs> I think it's Wisdom 16. Wisdom 16. Ooh, la la. Ah! Callie as well is just short, so they both seize up. Okay, so they're, hold they're held. Mm-hmm. Okay, they're paralyzed for the duration it was one minute. Is there a cage that can roll or move or something? <laughs> or like a container I can put them in? Um, you are you asking Histon this? I'm looking. Make a perception check. I would like to have another jar situation going on While here. I look, <laughs> I can yell at Histon, see if he knows. Is there? there are what is it? Something. I need to move these people. Can I find something? And it's 14 on perception. Do you want them at the size they are now? Or would you prefer them um, smaller? Whatever. You want them fun size? Sure. The regular size. What? Yes, you what? Go ahead. If he's gonna do it, I'll let him do it. I don't want to waste my time. He'll cast reduce. That's some spare jaws you can use. Just make sure Again, that, that spell holds. only that only that spell only lasts a minute. Eh. What happens if we? <laughs> we can't put the He casts a. Uh, I'm going to use... I like the 3... 3E three e spell. 
He casts another spell following up. Well, I mean, you could always say these are enchanted jars that keep whatever thing is going on, like, permanently, because then like, that would make sense for, like, some of the stuff that they do. Yeah, she also has a room full of tiny true. people. Like, the jars themselves are meant to keep spells active. Yeah. Ooh, I like that. I was going to say so, yes. So then when they so when they come out, they will, like, if they get put in there 30 seconds into the spell, like, it pauses that spell... And they come out, they would have 30 seconds left of that spell. Oh, I like that. I like that. I was going to say he has the spell Permanence, which is from an older edition of D&D, which just makes whatever active effects need to be dispelled in order to, for the effect to end. Um, mm. It's an old, I think it's a 3.5e spell. Let me see. I mean, at the, with that, doing it that way as well, it gives a reason as to, like, if, like say down the road uh what you call it Hala get is it Hala? no who no who is Briar. in the jar Hila. Briar. oh no, no Briar. Briar. if Briar ever got out like they'd have x amount of time and then they sh- zip back up to normal size and gives them a better chance of escaping as well that's true <clears throat> just an idea I like that. Do whatever. Ah, uh, but can- canonically, they did have a while of being small, though. You could also say, you could also then, you could do something like, uh, upcasting, like, increases the duration of enlarge work. reduce. I like that. Because they are, from my understanding as well, Hissed into them are level 20. So. That's true. If the, like, saying, hey, we're casting at a really high level, it's just. And they get, like, a ninth level, like, for every spell, like, level afterwards, maybe it's, like, their initial one is one minute, but then every one after that is an hour. Mm. So then, say they cast at ninth level. That means it's an eight-hour-long spell. I like that. And they can easily cast a ninth level. I yeah. like that. And then that also gives you a reasoning for why Briar was still small. Yes. I like that. We're doing that. Okay. Um... So now they're both held and shrunk. Yep. And I put, I'll put them in the jar. Okay. Does he give me a jar? Yeah, he the gives jars. Me jars. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah. Well, I mean, yeah, but, he'll, he'll just point to them. He's not that nice. Not to you. No, I know. <laughs> I'm not nice to him either. It's just funny. No, <laughs> Go get the jars and I'll put them in the jars. And I'll shut the jars. Make sure the air hole's in there. Trust me, you don't want to know what happens if you don't. It's a little hard to guess. <laughs> Perfectly good See, waste this, of a... This is why undeath is better. Don't need air holes. Right? Okay, and I'll take them to the core line after... I'll poke a tiny little air hole. Like, enough... A enough, air hole. Well, enough yeah, for air to... An air hole. <laughs> one. You get one. <laughs> they get air. They just can't come out. They're small. I w- I w- yeah, I will say, if they're small, they're long to... <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. those jars are going to last a long while anyway. Oh, yeah. yeah. All right. Um, you take, take them, them down to Coraline. Coraline, Coraline is uh, at her desk right now writing some notes about a recent... Uh, research project she's been working on. Just kind of glance up. Ah, Abigail. I see you I found the done. replacements. Oh, thank you so much. Thank you. Oh my gosh. Oh, these two are so adorable. She'll kind of like shake the jars. Oh my goodness. Oh. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I'll put them over here on the shelf with the others. There we are. Thank you. That one might get me in trouble. The, 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 
still all right here. Why is that? Yes. Uh, I think some of the people grew attached to her. So try not to do anything, if you can help it, too crazy. Oh, please, I never risk the mortality of my subjects if I can help it. They're very hard to find these days. I'll be back. Go for it. Right, but you know, sometimes they get sentimental and it's like, not just about mortality, but you know. If you can help it. I will be very careful with my experiments of her, on her, then. Thank you. Of course, of course. What are you working on? Me? Right now? Um, I am currently working on a potion to uh, reverse aging. Currently, it is a bit too potent. Which is a problem. She kind of points to a number of jars that have babies in them. <clears throat> <laughs> I'm I trying see to that. figure out how to. Um, it, that goes too far back. Um, I'm trying to figure out how to control the amount of de aging it does. Hmm. Interesting. Why are you working on that? Just for research. You just have a curious mind, or you're doing all this research for a reason? No, actually, most of this is just sheer curiosity. I mean, we have the world at our fingertips. There's virtually no one else out there, and no one to tell us no. So why not use it as an opportunity to learn more about the magical world around us? I suppose you're right. Oh, of course I'm right. I've been at this have, for years, you know. And have you ever been off of Geshale? No, not since I was a little girl. It's unfortunate. What do you mean? Well, it used to be so pretty here. One of the most beautiful continents you'll ever be to, uh, visit. I, uh... I had been to, oh, I guess it was just Velton back then, I don't know what it is now. And um, Galeid as well. Beautiful, beautiful places in their own right. I did like the, the ancient yet modern mix of Galeid. Very rustic yet tropical. But my favorite was always home, always here. Why do you ask? Just curious. You talk like there's no other people. I mean, there are a few, but we keep our distance. No, I know, but in the greater world, I guess this is pretty isolated. I would say this is pretty isolated, yes. We but we cannot leave this continent, if that's what you're getting at. You can't or no one can? Oh, no one can. Many have tried. But yep. Tistin thinks he can open portals. Um, Tistin's always been a dreamer. He's been working on this project of his for millennia, and it's never gotten anywhere. He keeps saying he doesn't have all the ingredients he needs, but... Well, everyone has their dream. You don't think it would work? Why should it? People have tried for so long, and no one's ever gotten off this continent alive. He's tried. Have you tried? 
when I was very young. I did. A few times. Quite a few, actually. <laughs> Nothing ever worked. Let me be blunt then. I think Histen's tricks are not working more because he is Histen than because the tricks are bad tricks. What are you getting at? Do you want to get off the continent? After so long here, I don't know how I would interact with the normal world again. I mean, the undead are kind of my place at this point. There's undead everywhere. Oh, I suppose that's right. Yes, but others ha other places have those adventurers that go and they hunt undead and all that. Ridiculous. <laughs> Tell me about it. At least here I'm free to be myself. Do you have some mystical way to escape this continent? Do I? Yes. I'm trying to help Piston do it, but... I don't have much faith in Piston. What do you need from me, then? I'm just saying, if there's something you want, you should go for it yourself instead of relying on him. Are you saying we hijack his project and complete it without him? Not if you don't want to get off the continent, but after some time, research needs resources. You're going to run this continent dry at some point. I don't know. Might be interesting to find other things to do. It would be nice to have a portal to another place. That does sound nice. There would be a lot of things to see if you weren't limited to the box that you are in. And if privacy is your concern, then you can always come back here if you have the portal. This is true. Alright, well. What's your plan exactly? I'm not saying anything. Plan. I'm just saying, you know, have you ever thought about it? Well, never seemed like a real possibility before. But my dear Histon does get a little bit caught up in his head sometimes, and the result is that he doesn't always calculate properly. He seems to be lacking in multiple areas. I would be cautious. I know he has his issues. We all have our flaws. Doesn't change the fact that I love him. But you're very sweet and thoughtful to say so. And she kind of like gives a little, <laughs> little nose boop. I mean, I don't get it, but okay, to each their own. Well, Histon will be out for a stroll later this evening if you wish to go take a tour of the, um, He's trying to open that portal, right? Summon something, channel something that will allow him to open portals at will, I believe. Something like that. If you want, we can take a look around. Um, once he's out for his evening stroll. Sure. Or, better yet, 
I could persuade him to bring me on as well. Hmm. Interesting. That works. All right. I will go talk to him. Um, you... Would you like to come? Or you know, perhaps you need something to eat or drink? Me? Yeah, no, I don't. Just find some creature outside or something. Alright, well, I'm going to go talk to him real quick. And she'll get up and kind of flow out the door and head up to, uh, speak to to Histon about assisting him in his project. Wait, she's talking to Histon about assisting him in his project? Yeah. Oh, oh did I, did that was I hear that? Just, yeah, that was what she just said. She said I could talk to Histon. About bringing me her on, her, her she could talk to him about bringing her on to to work with him. Oh, um, I thought that's not what I understood. <laughs> I thought <laughs> I thought she was bringing him on a walk. No, <laughs> no, nope, nope. she said I'll go talk to him about bringing her on. She said I'll go talk to him about bringing me on and and that's helping okay. me on the project. All right. Right. And and Abby was like, all right. I feel like Abigail was like planning ahead and unintentionally did the parental, yeah, yeah, sure, whatever. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I didn't understand that correctly. So when she sees her, her talking to his and be like, I should join her, she's like, oh, that was, oh. <laughs> Abigail just trails up and is like, uh, not what I, I can mind. work. I can work with this. I can work with this. Okay. <laughs> uh, she'll, she'll just, how far away are they? Like, how far did... They, I'll probably be following, because I'm assuming it's, like, a hallway. Yeah, I mean, she's in a different tower, if you remember. So she goes out, goes across the courtyard, yeah. goes up to spiral staircases, blah, 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 and she's at Histon's laboratory. Okay, so I'll at least follow her there. Once they're there... Yeah, I'll pretend to do something, and I'll listen. Okay. To you roll something. Or do they not care? <laughs> you'll listen and what I'm going to pretend to be doing something and I'm going to listen really intently okay go for it you can uh, roll well actually you know what you don't even know. I'll just I'll just let you basically she for time's sake she goes up and she, she tells him that Abigail had suggested that maybe he needs a fresh pair of eyes for she okay you know, I'll, 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 i'm kidding she's being very nice <laughs> so, darling abigail had suggested that you might need a fresh pair of eyes to complete your project and um i was wondering if perhaps i could mm, help you out with it um uh i don't know if that would be a good idea i have been working tirelessly on my calculations i don't want you mucking anything up oh but i won't dear I always assist you to the T, remember? We've never had any issues when I'm helping out. Fine, I suppose so. Abigail, if you're listening, you come up with the dumbest fucking ideas. Hope this thing blows up in your face or something. No, actually, I shouldn't say that. I need a good apprentice. How well, good help is hard to find these days. Uh. I come up with the best ideas only, Histon. Yes, I'm sure you do in your dreams. Come, come, dear, darling, darling. Let's... I think maybe you, you could take a few minutes outdoors before you insult our apprentice further, alright? Fine. Oh, this is... He's like this all the time. He just... Outdoors is not going to change this. I'm okay with it because I'm very secure and strong on the inside. Ah. But like, I think it, you know, I understand. Some people sometimes they feel the need to, like, you know, be mean to other people. I get it. It's fine. <laughs> yes, you're about as secure and strong as a baby deer. 
And he just like strode, strides by you on the way out the door. He's like, I'll take a quick turn about the courtyard with him and we'll be back in a bit and we can discuss the uh, project further then. Sound okay? That's great. That's fine. Perfect. All right. Wonderful. Um, you take care, dear. And she'll kind of flow out the door after him. Okay. <laughs> Do you wish to follow them on their walk, or what would Abigail like to do? She has the uh, a, a bunch of prisoners just staring at her from behind the bars. Well, I assume I have the lab unattended. You do currently, yeah. Except for the prisoners. Actually, no. They're mad at me. They might snoop on me. Hmm. Yeah, they don't know what I'm doing. I'm gonna go through shit, see if I can find any notes, any info, anything that it looks like I'm not supposed to go through. I'm gonna go through that. Okay. All right, roll investigation. <laughs> Come on. Your favorite sort of rolls. Right. Eleven. Okay. Not good. You find a few notes. Um, a lot of, like. He it's like writes and then scratches out and then rewrites and scratches out. A lot of notes about trying to contact demons yeah, with interdimensional so travel ability capabilities. Okay. Notes on how to open portals and um, stabilize them and stuff like that. The room where he put the statue. Is, do I, is the statue still where he put it? The one of the goddess? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So you mean the ritual room to, uh, off to the right? You want to go the, check out in there? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> is the statue still there? Yeah. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take it. Okay. I'm gonna put my fake one on there. Okay. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna, uh. How. How. Um, can I roll, like, because she doesn't really know exactly what it is, right? She knows it's a... No, actually, she kind of does. The priest is still Yeah. The holy artifact? Yeah. She's gonna... It's a piece of Swiss cheese. <laughs> <laughs> she doesn't... It's a Would holy you know artifact. how to activate it? Uh-huh. <laughs> Would she know how to activate it? Just by speaking to it, essentially. Mm. Roll religion. Ten. Ten. Ten with a plus eight. (laughs) With a plus eight. Um, I rolled a two. (laughs) Yeah, you basically just pray to it. and Pray or talk? Kind of the same thing, technically. It's just well, the difference between talking is you're like, hi, th- no, yeah, it's the same thing. So you have to be all like, pray, oh, dear goddess. No, pray, okay. no, praying is simply talking to a deity. That is all it is. Okay. She's gonna take the That's statue it. and ask, why would someone need this in? A ritual that seems not very holy. He's gonna, she's she, gonna ask this of the goddess? She's gonna ask it to the statue, ask whatever happens, statue. happens. <laughs> I don't think she's gonna get it. Roll persuasion. Persuasion? Yeah. Okay. 
Oh, that's a beautiful nat one with a seven total. Silence. Can I can I check religion or Man, something? Man, you have you I'm... have some you have some good charisma and intelligence, my dude. Right. Uh, roll. Yeah, you can roll religion to to what? I want to know if it's something I did wrong. Or if it's like a religious shit. Okay. Religious thing. Uh, is it something I did? I mean, <laughs> all I've done is kidnap a bunch <laughs> of children. And, and like, this is Abigail's know. story of losing their religion. <laughs> <laughs> right? I didn't have one to get 20. Religion yeah, no, this was all you. Oh, this is me? What did I do? You. The better question is, what did you not? <laughs> you were speaking. <laughs> You were clear, you, 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 you like, okay, when, when, like, Marcus would speak to this, he was clearly speaking to the goddess. You were clearly speaking to the statuette. Okay, can I try you again? You were speaking to it, not through it. Okay. It's can like I if I again? pick up a microphone and put, I don't put statue to the <laughs> head. Hello? <laughs> I just, hey. Yeah. I want yeah. to read. There's, there's a difference between me going beep 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 hello and me going hi phone how you doing? <laughs> okay, so I guess she's talking to the statue. Um, she's gonna. Can I try again? Sure, go for it. Talking at the statue or to the statue <laughs> or through, or the, through statue. the statue. She's gonna try. So with the religion check, she knows she has to talk through it, or she doesn't know that. She knows that. With the, with a dirty okay. 20? Heck yeah. <laughs> She's going to try and talk She knows that she it? wasn't being very reverent to the yeah. goddess. Oh, well, that's not going to change. This <laughs> you get what you get. Uh, she's going to try it again. Okay. I don't know how you talk through, but she's going to try and talk through it. Just imagine... Direct signal I, I mean, to okay, the I'm I'm talking through my computer to right. you. <laughs> like You're not I'm not looking talk, at the computer. I'm not I'm not going, you know, it would be great if someone could tell me if this sort of thing would happen and I just was never making eye contact with like the webcam and I just started turning my you head. You make this eye way, contact with the webcam? And just started just start talking in general like prolonged eye contact. Prolonged eye contact. Prolonged eye contact. No. <laughs> <laughs> Nas's uh, worst nightmare prolonged eye contact is this no. what we're all doing now no <laughs> everyone leaned in and stared at Nas so Nas no. feels uncomfortable we're not even staring yes. at Nas she just thinks it's just in her brain I, don't, I can't do it in her brain it, yes. it's going they're staring at you <laughs> and really it's just me and Ian staring into each other's eyes Let's, yeah. let's let's have the three guys pick on the one girl on this uh, this session tonight. Did that's, you just assume my like... Did you just assume my gender? Yes. <laughs> Excuse me. I have massive mommy milkers. Okay, is that <laughs> if that's not feminine? I'd... <laughs> I've also seen you shirtless, which would imply this is true. <laughs> Everyone who watches the stream has because the first two sessions. That that's why I was saying. And Karen doesn't wear a shirt. <laughs> that's what I was saying. <laughs> Ian has drawn my titties because he draw Kieran ones. <laughs> he drew Kieran ones. <laughs> Technically speaking, Ian has drawn half naked pictures of me because <laughs> Kieran looks basically just like me with more you muscle. Want the rest, I got to get paid for that. <laughs> <laughs> I am pay I am paying you for art soon. So. <laughs> It's all of a sudden become a very different sort of commission. Whoa. <laughs> it's like, hey, so the only place he's wearing armor is the bracers now. And the oh. clip. Everything else, cool. new. <laughs> Tastefully, his great sword covers between his legs. He's using a giant's club now, if you catch my drift. Kira now uses a only bludgeoning damage. <laughs> And it's still say, and I, it's still a two handed weapon. <laughs> I will say so. That's, ter that's, my, that's terrifying. And one of my games that I played, like one of the early ones, uh, early on, for what it's a bunch of guys, and they decide, ah, we're gonna roll for dick size. 
at the start of the campaign. They, so everyone rolled a d12. Why? And, I had a group of players. Thing guys do. I actually, there's a well, party. here's the thing. I had a group of players do that once, and it's a campaign that is still ongoing. We've had three campaigns of this one. And the person who started it was a female character that told a male character, my dick's bigger than yours. And that, and then I jokingly said, roll for dick size. And they both rolled a d20. And I was like, <laughs> okay, I well, that's serious. Funny. And they were like, no, tell us. And I was like, <laughs> yeah, see, they see they they were like, we're rolling D12s. And uh, I, I, I rolled a 12 and they're like, give him the baker's dozen. <laughs> and so be, so then at one point we were in a cave. Please tell me it was another gnome. <laughs> and, no, it, I was I, technically I was a changeling. Um, but we were in a cave where there were troglodytes and my character was very fed up with combat. And I said, I dropped my pants and I'm going to helicopter. I want to intimidate. And I rolled a net 20 on that intimidation. <laughs> oh my God. See, I would have gone with the... So, with so the... I, I intimidated the troglodytes by whipping it out and just helicoptering it. <laughs> See, I would have gone with. I'm sure you, you know about oh, the. God. I'm sure you know about the grandfather clock. Wow! No. Put your legs, turn around, bend over, and just wiggle it back and forth so it looks like a grandfather clock going. We're we're earning our 18 plus reputation. This right? is like this is my <laughs> life. This is my life. <laughs> there is a podcast I listen to, Dungeons and Daddies, that they did that in their first season was they rolled for dick sizes because that's the maturity that, you know, they bring to the podcast and it is absolutely hilarious and fun. They have one woman on the cut podcast. Her character was yeah. a male character, but her character rolled highest. <laughs> Appropriate. Uh, yeah, yeah. The, she was like, canonically, my character. Listen, I love that player because Scary Marlowe is my favorite character in the in the part i'm at right now and i'm oh, like yeah. yes her yeah her characters are always absolutely amazing you're not my real dad terry i just found out she's <laughs> only like four years older than me yeah <laughs> it broke my brain actually i think i think beth might be younger than you how old do you think i am markham 32 no oh i'm 30 <laughs> oh never mind she's older than you by like nine months yeah <laughs> That made me so. Do I look that old? <laughs> <laughs> it's a two year difference. Is that that? I know. I'm just using. <laughs> Wait, what? Oh, yeah. Beth, so, recent, in a recent episode, Beth mentioned that she's like recently turned 31. I was like, huh? <laughs> I mean, I'm only like a few years younger than Marisha Ray, but. I thought they were all in their 40s. Marisha's not in her 40s. She's in her 30s. Oh, wow. She's the youngest. She's like 10 years younger than Laura Bailey and uh, Travis Willingham. Wait, she's even younger than Ashley Johnson? Yeah, Ashley's almost the same age as Travis and Laura. Ashley's in her 40s, I think, or late 30s. No, Ashley's in her late 30s. I'm Googling. <laughs> this, this is weirding me out hearing this. <laughs> right? Because that area where I'm Marisha like... Marisha Ray is 34 years old. Matt Mercer is 40, Laura Bailey's 41, Ashley Johnson is 39, ah, Travis, Willing <laughs> Travis Willingham is 41, let's see about Tallison. Tallison looks like he's like 44. Tallison Jaffe is 46. Okay. Huh. How old is Liam? Liam's the other one. Liam looks... 46. Liam is 46. Okay. And how old is this? Is Sam? Sam also forty six. <laughs> so Mar Marisha is the baby at thirty four. Oh, very much so. <laughs> I didn't realize she was that much younger than the others. Oh well, yeah, she was like, she was friends with Laura through uh, working on a show called Superpower Beatdown. That's how they knew her. She was the, she was the like. Hi, I'm the host girl. That was like her <laughs> first big break job was the live action equivalent of Death Battle on YouTube. And Laura got to be on it one episode. That's how they became friends. And then she broke away from that and got super famous because of Critical Role. <laughs> and she met Matt, married Matt, and is the 
the envy of every single per- D and D fan in existence because she married Matt Mercer, <laughs> right? So it just occurred to me she was like twenty six when they started the camp first camp when they first started airing stuff. Yeah. Oh, that's so she weird. Was in her mid twenties when they started Critical Role, and Matt because Matt was yeah. Troy the- Baker is shockingly ancient. I was surprised <laughs> at how old he is. <laughs> I'm curious how old. How old is Yuri Lowenthal? Like, he doesn't look as old as he is, but he's old. Yeah, he's... Oh, okay. Oh, look, he's Yuri 47. Lowenthal, Yuri Lowenthal is 52? But that's Spider-Man. Ha! <laughs> old Spidey. Oh, sorry. We got off topic. Uh, we Naz, did. <laughs> uh, what's... What was that role? You rolled Sorry, Ian and I started talking about penises and it just went from there. <laughs> and somehow we got on the cast of Critical Role's ages. I'm not quite sure how those all connect. I'm surprised Sam Regal has never tried to roll for penis size. Well, maybe we'll get Very you two on a, on a podcast episode someday together and you'll bring the energy and then he'll do it. I roll a 12, just saying. Wow. <laughs> Hang on, let's see what Irsa had. 18. Oh, wait, that's a d20. <laughs> don't, don't give yourself a penis. <laughs> like, I'm no, bi, but I don't energy. think... Ki- I don't, I, I'm bisexual, but I don't think Kieran is. <laughs> just the energy. Just the energy of it. So, Naz, right, what, did, what did you... Sorry, sorry, sorry Naz. <laughs> we, we'll bring ourselves back up to the maturity <laughs> level of the youngest of our group. Oh, I'm going to go try now. <laughs> 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 Leaving middle school, re-entering college. Um, Naz, uh, what'd you roll for your your re-persuasion attempt as you try and talk through? I didn't roll. I did oh, not have didn't? to do that. You persuasion. Did. Let yes. me try that again. Better nineteen. Ah, much better. <laughs> what does she say this time? Say <laughs> to me, but through the statue. So like. So maybe you looking somewhere else. Like, <laughs> <laughs> like, I don't know where you are directionally, but like, why would someone try to be using this in a ritual that looks fairly um, unholy? There's a moment of silence. And then you hear for the first time a voice in your head that is not your own. Uh, God. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> She put, she's going to put the statue close to her ear because she was probably <laughs> expecting it to come from there. <laughs> it comes from inside your head. Very yeah. noticeably so. Um, that probably but, startles her a little bit. Yeah, probably. Ah. A new hand touches the beacon. No, I'm kidding. We're not doing... <laughs> uh, Too late. No. You've already done it. <laughs> That's true. Um, um, she goes... Ah, so you are curious. Yes. There's another moment of silence. Okay. I was going to say we could hear you, but then I saw you. Slowly lower the statue Uh because she realizes it doesn't work like that. There are some rituals that transcend the traditional views of good and evil. This is a ritual that has not yet been attempted in this plane of existence, and I have offered my services to ensure its safety and stability. So you're already helping? Well, I cannot help unless my name is called upon during the course of the ritual. Yes, well, I'm assuming that thing won't work. She points at the fake session. 
But oh. no, it would not. I would appreciate it if you would put my artifact back when you are done with it. I would not wish to be harmed. Why would you be harmed? Because make a religion check for me. Mm. <laughs> the 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 assumptions that I have right now are not good ones, and huh. it makes me not happy I and uneasy. Don't know what's happening. And I'm and at the same time. There's part of me that's very glad that uh, we. Do not have Matthew here to hear this. <laughs> yeah, it's okay. Because if this is what I am assuming I it means, it's. Mm. I think, yeah, 22. 22. Hers is not the only known deity to have an artifact on there. Hey. There are several. Um. So among the like various demonic and, and uh, other f forms of fiendish tokens that are on there, there are also a number of statuettes of various gods and goddesses, such as Ali herself, that are on this um, ritualistic altar. Sick moves, bro. <laughs> Just see her like do a heel flip. Skateboard. <laughs> <laughs> The, our, the goddess of skateboarding, Ollie. Yeah. <laughs> the first move that anyone learns is named after her. Gosh. <laughs> um. No. This um, is what happens yes. when you have me in your games. That, right. That you, you get things like this. And what happened with Alan? Yes. <laughs> I'm just going to wiggle. The distraction. <laughs> You're the visual Wait, no. distraction. Pick pop of love. <laughs> oh my gosh. Did so, anyone see the new Mario movie? Yes. Peck, Donkey Kong. You can do your peck dance. You've earned it. I will. Yes. <laughs> that was surprisingly funny and nostalgic for me. I want to play my old Mario games again, but I don't know if the Wii works right now. Um. So That's why I use emulators? What? I didn't say that on stream. What? What? Tears of the Kingdom? What? Um, wish I could emulate that and not have to pay seventy dollars for it, but I did. <laughs> I didn't. What? <laughs> so, uh, so Abigail, um, the goddess replies with part of Histon's plan involves. A deal made with uh, certain beings, which will create some change in the heavens. I am among a number of the gods that would rather not meet our end in this event. And so we have chosen wisely. Which means you have sided with Histon or away from Histon? I will leave that for you to determine. I am determining it by asking you the question. It's smited. <laughs> <laughs> Roll persuasion. <laughs> Let's see how charming you are to this goddess. Not at all. Apparently, nine. Nine. That's very sweet. Um, use your best judgment. Do you he think sucks. that, with yourself, aiding Histon? his assault on the heavens will be successful or no? Uh, 
duty offers you lodging. It's judgment. What? It's a really bad joke. Sorry. Oh, sorry. I said Judy offers you a lozenge. It's a judgment. Oh, got it. Lozenge. I got it. <laughs> that was worse joke. than some of my dad jokes. It's a good <laughs> joke. I just didn't get it at first. I just replaced this statue with clay. And I'm some person who just crashed on a ship three months ago. I don't think Histon has a shot. But are you here because your ship merely crashed? Or are you here because I needed your aid? Bum, 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 bum. I think my ship crashed. There was waves and everything. And you think a goddess of nature cannot control the seas? I don't know. The seas can move by their own. Probably. That's Maybe. not the question that was asked. <laughs> <laughs> you are very... Okay. Curious mortal. I am not mortal. You are compared <laughs> to me. You are now. Imagine. Oh, you like being a you like being a dad here. <laughs> now you're human. Have fun. <laughs> you suddenly find yourself a halfling. This time Abigail's no. worst okay. nightmare. <laughs> Ew, human. Ew. <laughs> I suppose that's true. Of course, Nightmare, you're alive again. Again? Oh, you're alive now. <laughs> okay, so why did you... You're trying to make me believe that you crash a whole fucking ship just to, like, what, get a statue on this little plane altar? Perhaps. Need human sacrifices, too, don't forget. She didn't do that. I mean, she did why? Not necessarily human, but. <laughs> Not necessarily. Abigail, your destiny is far grander than I think you realize. Oh my god, you sound like that priest is. I'm just trying to scam people. <laughs> and sometimes it's those that do not wish for the glory that have it bestowed upon them. Not only do I not wish for it, I am completely built for something on the other plane of existence than glory in the way that you I'm would probably built mean. different. <laughs> and, and what do you cracks know of an me? egg. <laughs> and what My favorite you... video of that is where the guy cracks the egg, like trying to be, and then I like the skinny girl does the exact same thing. <laughs> yes. <laughs> And I, I remember when I first saw that, I was like, cracking an egg with your bicep is a heart. One I saw was one dude who put a full apple there and <laughs> popped That's the apple. That's impressive. By flexing, I was like... That's impressive. And what do you know of me and my... 
tight. <laughs> They're making assumptions, but you are. That you like children. <laughs> what? Abigail loves children. No, the guy asked, What do you know about me and my type? Hmm. It seems like a lot of deities like children. They do support them, keep them alive more than Abigail does. I didn't do anything. You are a holy being. Usually that means some area of things will be under your command, whatever, whatever. It's all about, like, keeping the balance and doing the right thing and being good and... Whatever. That type of shit, you know. And what if a corruption has crept into the heavens that might require one to take steps that are not necessarily viewed as traditionally good by these overly pious individuals you seem to believe all of us are. Yeah, there's a demon goat running around in the heavens. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> Baphomet, what are you doing here? <laughs> <laughs> Somebody read Berserk before they put that in the campaign. <laughs> Well, that sounds like a heavenly courts issue that you should probably bring up. And if those courts have failed us all? <laughs> then the justice system has failed us. <laughs> <laughs> then, I don't know, find someone who gives more of a shit than the person who spent 300 years just making stupid statues. Maybe that I... what you did? You spent 300 years making statues? <laughs> Duping art and... She was, a, she was a con artist who created faux art and tried to pass it off as ancient relics. <laughs> for 300 fucking years. At least 300 years. At least. And she wasn't very good at it either because she was still level one. I was very good one. at it. You're no, I was a level, one, level one wizard. Oh, fair enough, fair enough. That's not... You're like level 20 con artist. Okay, fair enough. Yeah, oh yeah. <laughs> level 1 wizard, level 20 con artist. Right, got it. Do you, do you have proficiency in persuasion? Yes. Okay. You better, based on... That's why if Kira story. dies, I just want to bring a paladin who is, like, impossible to lie persuasion to. Persuasion and deception. Right. He's just like, you can't lie to me. <clears throat> Oh, that would suck for Abigail Paladin to win the party and she lies and he's like, hey, zone of truth. Right. Fuck! <laughs> Gosh. Oh, no, I just gave Mark some ideas. <laughs> Abigail just needs to learn to be more like Sir Wellington. <laughs> be a child and adorable? No. Tell the truth. She can try the not the whole truth. <laughs> Do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? So help you the gods? Well, part of that statement, yes. She has done that, but sometimes it's because even part of the truth gets her in trouble. Mm, that's that's fair. <laughs> yeah, so she said... Well, yeah, she said something like, uh, find someone who gives more of a shit. You get magical x lax Now you do. <laughs> God, no one put Sir Wellington in charge of God communications. I'm gonna get so fucked up. Right. <laughs> well, that would be hilarious. Oh, oh, so oh this campaign. It's so good. I I'm sorry, Markham. <laughs> it's all right. <laughs> it's funny, and we like funny. Yeah, but you were trying to do something serious and like horror, and then there, and then there's me that's just like, ah! <laughs> you bring the comedy into this comedy horror. She um, she chuckles softly at Abigail's declaration that someone who gives a shit needs to be found, and she goes, "But I don't want someone who gives a shit."
Or do you want someone who doesn't give a shit? That should be more preferable. They won't mess up. You won't mess up. Someone who gives a shit is always obsessed with doing everything just so. Just right. Just perfect. Yes, I know someone of that type. And she actually rarely ever messes up. It's infuriating. She messed up at one point and doesn't remember it now. <laughs> I was tempted to bring that up, but I decided against it. Well, I guess there's a diamond in every rough, isn't there? Diamond in every rough. Here. How about, I could show you very much how little of a shit I can give. Do you really want to know? Your open defiance against a being who could stuff your life out in an instant increasingly intrigues me. He <laughs> goes and breaks a statue. <laughs> Watch what that! What gonna do? <laughs> <laughs> That's what I figured. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm still alive. I'm dead, but bounce. Who's to say it's not an illusion or some mind fuckery? You really want them to care about what you're doing, Marco? What would it take to persuade you that this isn't simply illusion? I don't know, I don't give a shit, so, like, what do you... What do you want? Let's say I thought it was real, what do you even want? I would like it if you would ensure first of all that my statue is placed back where it belongs and second that you make sure Histon does not screw up the ritual See, I'm telling you, I was actually trying to make him screw it up on purpose. You picked the wrong person. Well, maybe I have and maybe I haven't. Oh my god. I'm going to turn this off. You're getting annoying. Do I know how to turn it off? No. I don't know how to turn it off? No, you never- They're in your- they're in your head. Yeah, you don't have any knowledge of how to turn it I'm gonna start, like, shaking the statue, <laughs> I don't know, like, hitting right. it a couple times. You are very entertaining, Abigail of I... the Nazarian clan. No, no, no. This is off. <laughs> You, you shake the phone without hanging up, and you're like, stop oh, talking! How do you hang up? <laughs> <laughs> you hear that hang soft, up. You just this hear was more than I bargained for! Stop it! She realizes soft. it's not working. She's gonna, like, take it, take her statue, her fake statue back and, like, place it on and, like, wait for her to say something. 
I look forward to working more with you in the future. Abigail Vinsarian from Clan. How sturdy does it look? What do you mean? The statue. The real one. Roll, uh, let's do Arcana, since it's a magic guy. Okay. okay. 24. Going to sturdiness. About average for a statuette. If I can't shove it off the thing, do, do we think it'll break or no? Actually, yeah, from that height it probably would. It would? Okay, then I'm not going to do it. I'm just gonna and storm off and like kind of mumble to myself. Wait, if are you trying to break it or are you not trying to break it? I'm not trying to break it. Okay. I just want it to be annoying and shove it off. But ah. that's my method of shoving things off and if I can't do it without breaking it, I don't wanna get potentially smoked. Yeah, Abigail really is a cat. Right? <laughs> I want to push things off the edge and like just be annoying, like pop, pop. I want pop. to push it off the edge and wait till she says, eh, 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 eh. and then I'm gonna wait and look at her and make eye contact. And when she starts turning, I'm gonna sure. <laughs> Only wants affection on her terms. Yes, that tracks. That tracks, Abigail. It's true. Never... She is a cat. All right. Yeah. What would Abigail like to proceed with doing? Yeah, she's going to keep mumbling angrily to herself, and she's going to go check on Micah again. All right. So as Micah, if she goes to check on Micah, we'll pan back over to the rest of the crew. Um, <laughs> the rest of the crew? Except for Callie, Briar, and Abigail. <laughs> so half of the crew. Um as you guys work... We ha we pan over to the males. Oh, gosh, it's true. We just divided the guys and the girls. <laughs> you, just, you just went segregation. <laughs> it's okay, I'll split the party further to fix that. Um, we'll send Sir Wellington off on his own. Um, where are... <laughs> I mean, what's uh, you, new there? Right. So you guys are now journeying on your way to catch up to Callie um, and meet her at Sanctuary. Yep. Sorry, I'm just, I'm fading. <laughs> no problem, no worries, no worries. This will be the wrap-up. Um, is there anything you would like to do on the journey? I give Snickers a piece of jerky as well as Wellington. I don't have any cookies, sadly. I consume, consume it, and then I take out my pack jerky and hand it to Harrison and uh, Kaylee. I had to pull out a huge piece of raw meat from my bag of holding and give it to Rio. <laughs> nice. He, he chomps it. I imagine he smacks when he eats, too, and is it because he's a bear, you know? Mm. I give him head scratches. I give stickers head scratches. Aww. I give Wellington head scratches. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> yes. Um. As you proceed, everyone make perception checks for me. Or both of you, I guess. <laughs> that one. So two. Sixteen. All right. Kieran, Sir Wellington, sorry, you're busy with your buddies. And there's a new bear you can play with, so there's that. Um, that makes sense. Kieran, you spot in the distance scouting parties. 
Or it's so it seems. What kind of scouting parties? Were devil scouting parties? No. This is... Not from what you can tell. <laughs> yes, I yeah. should do that. Not from what you can tell. No, uh, you already said um, no, you can't go back on it now. <laughs> no, it is, um... It appears to be something else. Uh... They look like holy... Yeah, they're not weird devils. These are the weird pigs of Clan 32 <laughs> of Subsector D. <laughs> they look like paladins. Okay. Um, over the, the, the course of the next several days as you're traveling, you spot these with increasing frequency, and they seem to be hunting um, demons. Or you'll see them in the distance fighting Demons. either uh, hordes of demons or like one larger one. But they're always hunting demons. Okay. Uh, looks like we got some demon hunters there. But I'm more interested in finding Kali first. Right. Nice to listen to me. She said I've gone off on her own. That's Kali for you. And yeah, one, I'm aware. One, well, yeah. And one particular night, as you guys are just kind of chilling by the fireplace, give me one last perception check. Fifteen. Okay. <laughs> Net 20. Hey! Going from one extreme to the next. Right? So, 21. That's a pretty... Whoop, whoop! Yep. The duality of the dice. Yeah. You hear... <clears throat> You hear what at first sounds like a distant rumbling. And it steadily grows in nearer and nearer. And then you realize it is the sound of horse hooves. Until they stop just outside the tents. And so that, they're in there. Can I tell that they're around tents? And I, so we're in a tent. Is there fair ground where we are? Like in the tent? Yeah, probably. Am I with Harrison and Kaylee? Yeah. I would imagine they would, they would share your tent. I mean, unless you would tell them to get their own tent. No, I wouldn't be telling them to do that. Okay. As. Things would be approaching because of just everything we've done, we've experienced. I'm gonna dig straight down, start digging, All just right. like the, like the little. This would be like a. At this point, like foot and a half by foot and a half hole. It's just big enough for us to like crawl through. Okay. Like it's 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 small, but it's like big enough for like a kid to like crawl into and like through. Like, for us. Um, and it's going to go straight down, like, at an angle, kind of not straight down, but, like, at a steep angle down mm -hmm. for about, I'm going to go about 10 feet down and then create, like, a three foot by three foot little alcove. Not bad. All right. And uh, you, you dig down there. Um... Harrison and Kaylee follow you to safety. And with the sound of, of horses whinnying outside of your tents in the middle of the night, that is where we leave off for tonight's session. And <laughs> Naz just stepped away in time for the finale. Um, we'll, give, we'll give her a moment to get back. Um... As we do outros, uh, Kieran, and you can take your time. So she has time to get back. 
Hi, I'm Cole Wolfrun. I am the DM for Chronicles of Rivera over on Lakeside Legends. If you want to go check us out, we've recently started re-uploading our new episodes. Well, uploading our new episodes. And I also find me on TikTok, Cole underscore Wolfrun, where I do a lot of cosplay stuff for Paladin and Barbarian and just some D&D chatting. Uh, I also got a book coming, but that's not going to be a while, so don't worry about that. But uh, yeah, that's me. All right, Ian. Yeah, guys, I'm Ian, um, a.k.a. Artful underscore thinking on most social medias uh, like Instagram, Twitter, then Ian Gerald one on places like Twitch. I do a lot of art. Um, good chunk of it also is D&D themed art. Um, but yeah, it's. An area where it's gonna, where I'm trying to get into more, doing more stuff uh, coming up. So feel free to check it out if you enjoy art. Um, and I am playing your lovable little gnome child who like really enjoys cookies, but uh, he's running low and that makes him sad. But he thinks he might be able to find some, but he also misses his friends, but he wants to protect the friends he has. So he's digging a hole. Um, and to make an alcove, and yeah, because he just doesn't trust sounds anymore. Right. Fair enough. Um. Well, I kind of think I know what Naza's uh, outro be. Oh, there she is. I don't have to make. I don't have to mo- do your outro for you. I'm Naz. I play Abigail. <laughs> That's exactly what I was gonna say. How did well, you know? We're How did just I know? In time. It is your outro turn. My name is Naz. I play Abigail. Whoa! She said it with verse. So I'm going to go to sleep so I can wake up and go work out and then play Star Wars and Zelda the rest of the day. That sounds like a good day. Um, I am Mr. Markham. I was your dungeon lord. I can never say that word. Sovereign. And yeah, you're your DM for the night. Um, you guys stay safe, stay lost, and, uh, have fun out there. The chaos is, and hopefully we'll can. oh, hi, <laughs> uh, Nerd Dad just joined the chat. We just, we're just wrapping up, um, chaos quick recap, um, Abigail insulted a goddess, so we'll see how that goes in the future. Um, she was fine with it. She was actually very chill with it. The goddess just found Abigail amusing and entertaining. Um, so she didn't get struck by lightning or anything of the sort. Uh, but anyhow, yes, uh, catch us every Thursday night. Uh, we usually start around 9 p.m. Eastern. Um, sometimes a little bit before, sometimes a little bit after, depending on the chaos that's going on. Um, but our official start time is 9 p.m. Eastern. Um, and then we have Friday nights. That's uh, who just joined the chat. Uh, our nerd dad, Telarius Game Master, wrote and runs uh, Legends of Kralis every Friday night. Um, and on his own channel on Saturdays or Sundays. I just blanked out on which. I think it's Saturdays. Um, <clears throat> we have bi weekly Rumors of Magic, which I believe is this Sunday. Um, for. Um, here on Dean the Nile, run by uh, wonderful Mazrix as the DM. And then Mondays, we have the Iwin Adventures as well here. Um, so definitely come check these out. A lot of great campaigns here. And um, yeah, you guys stay safe, uh, stay lost, and uh, well, I, you know what? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to borrow from Nerd Dead and say stay legendary. You guys take care, and we'll see you next week for the next session, the next chapter, Survivals of Gashale, Pranks and Problems. Until then, see you next time, guys.